thank you, everybody. This is the uh, May 23rd meeting of Open Research Institute's FPGA stand-up and office hours. And what we do here is we talk about what we've done, what we have planned to do over the next bit. Uh, generally, we do these weekly, so it's a week and you know, looking over the week and or more in review and what we have planned over the next week. If we need any resources in order to do our volunteer work, and if we have encountered any roadblocks and might need to call in uh, people to, to help us out. And so that's the format of the meeting. So let's go ahead and start with James at uh, Remote Lab South. Thank you very much. Uh, lots of things going on there in terms of building and infrastructure. Uh, the floor is yours. Sorry, the moment I tried to unmute, my dog had to make himself known. Um, we've been doing a lot of infrastructure projects done here at Remote Lab South. Um, in terms of Remote Lab projects themselves, I'm going to be speaking with you, Paul, after this meeting about some of the deployments that we're going to be doing. But otherwise, not too much major to report, just a lot of infrastructure being set up, a lot more in the way of permanent inst installations being prepared. Yeah, thank you very much. And we're looking forward to, to seeing you in person and helping out in person in September of 2023. All right, very we'll good. We'll be excited to see you all here. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, Paul, you have the floor. Okay, uh, we've been changing around the hardware for FPGA development on Remote Lab West here. I think we've reported on some of this already. Um, we've got a ZCU-102 with an ADRV-9009, no, 9002 radio, and the ZC-706 has the ADRV-9009. Is that right? It's really hard to keep these things straight. Um, there are approximately three ways or at least three ways to get one of these rigs on the air and doing something interesting. The easy way is to use a pre-built uh, Kuiper Linux distro from ADI, the manufacturer of the radio. And we've done that on both of the stations and it works. And we're able to command it with the ADI's application called IO oscilloscope. And uh, so hardware is there and working and we're able to do some stuff with it. Uh, another important way that we need to get working is using the MATLAB uh, support so we can run simulations directly to the hardware and out through the radio. Uh, this turns out to be a little more difficult, uh, not quite as plug and play as it ought to be. And Michelle's been taking the lead on struggling with that. We're making progress, getting close, I think, to being able to to do some of that with MATLAB. And the third way, which we haven't tried yet on either of the new radio configurations is to build with Pedalinux and uh, and have a, a fully custom setup, um, which may be what we need in the longer run to use uh, FPGA designs on the, on the system uh, straight from HDL instead of with HDL coder under MATLAB. So work is going on on this. Um, the only blocker here is that the documentation is marginal and the software is fragile and we don't really know what we're doing. But unless you have a solution for one of those things, then uh, we have uh, no immediate needs. Yeah, thank, thank you and well said. <laughs> it sums <laughs> it up quite well. Thank you so much for all of your very hard work. I think we can see... Uh, a lot of it in the background um, over your right shoulder uh, on the left of our screen is the uh, opulent voice station and a lot of the RF equipment. And then, <laughs> yes, that that stuff. And and that's that's moving forward as well. And we'll be in space soon. So we're very happy about that. And then over your left shoulder with that orange screen in the background, that is where all of this work for the FPGA development stations has has happened. We call that the FPGA table because it allows us access to the VMs um, that run all of this stuff. And like Paul said, there's a, a ZCU. The Z stands for, I don't know what, but it sounds like Xilinx. So the ZCU-102 is a Xilinx Ultrascale okay. Plus dev board. It's uh, paired with a uh, ADRV-9002, which is an amazing 
chip. So this upgrade was really good. Thank you so much to the Neptune team for identifying this chip for us. Uh, it works really well with the 102. The 9002 is a mobile targeted um, advanced zero IF uh, system on chip from analog devices. It uh, 12 kilohertz up to 40 megahertz uh, transmit bandwidth. So it's perfect for the the work that we're doing with Neptune, which is aimed towards uh, drone data links that will handle first person view uh, video and also aerospace and possibly cislunar work. The other station that's accessed from the orange glowing rectangle above your left shoulder is the uh, ZCU 706, which is a 7000 series ultra scale, uh, no, sorry, 7000 series Xilinx a chip, a big workhorse of their lineup, and the the radio card that's attached to that is the ADRV 9009. And this is the true, uh, you know, progression from the 9371. So it's a, a very uh, solid, broadband capable uh, system on chip. This is designed not for mobile applications like the 9002, but it's designed for infrastructure repeaters transceivers, transponders, and that's what we're uh, targeting now for our open source uh, HEO and GEO transponder, which can also be used for terrestrial, um, but it's uh, FDMA up and TDMA down. The downlink is DVBS2 with our custom IP, and the uplink is uh, frequency division multiple access. The native digital mode is opulent voice, our um, high fidelity, voice and data, data uh, protocol, and all the multiplexing is handled in the 9009 and then transmitted down with DVBS2, S2X. So we're a whole hell of a lot closer than we were before with better hardware. Um, the other station that we have here uh, in the lab is uh, Pluto SDR with the JTAG uh, soldered in so that you can access it directly over the web and do experiments. This has been very, very helpful to the DTV community. So there's been some big steps forward and we've published code in several places uh, with the station and it's still there, still available. So that's the big changes that we've done. Um, and we're, we are, ah, yes, yeah, there's a, there's one, there's the Pluto. We have a multiple varieties of those scattered around. The one that's in the lab that has all of its guts exposed, you can see its undies and all of the JTAG stuff is uh, quite quite a, quite good. <laughs> it's <laughs> but it's it's out of its uh, case. So yeah, the uh, and and as Paul said, there's three different ways to to handle these systems. So in general, you need an FPGA. You need a processor and you need a radio chip. And the combinations that we have are all, um, you know, very modern and, and featured and, and, and are complicated and require a, a pretty significant and steep learning curve. Um, there's, there's three different ecosystems of Linux builds to target the processor running the hard processor, like it's an actual, um, dedicated processor in the zinc uh, on all of these platforms and you know the linux build uh that targets them can either be petalinux which is from the the xilinx universe and we know how to do that and we've done this we've used this in the past there's the mathworks build root version of linux this is from matlab and enables uh hdl coder gpu coder uh all sorts of amazing things that they have uh, that we have access to because we have a uh, license for all of the toolboxes. Um, so we're looking for some benefits for, for working through uh, all of the build problems with the MaxWorks, MathWorks build route. That's what we've been working on over the past four days, pretty much solid. And we have had success. We've got a working build for the SD card for the ZC706, and we are still working on the last little few problems with the ZCU102. The next step for both of these is to incorporate the device tree for the radio card so that we can fully target the, uh, 
the the stations in MATLAB and use the full force of MATLAB in order to develop both Neptune and HIFORIA uh, code bases. And the third ecosystem, as Paul mentioned, is the Kuiper build that's directly from analog devices. And this is a Linux build that you can just download and get or build on your own from analog devices. And this, all of these builds give you IIO. Um, and this is industrial input output uh, library from analog devices to uh, that allows you to order your radio card around. And all of these use the HDL reference design from analog devices. So these three different ecosystems all have the same guts. They use IIO for the API. They use the HDL, the hardware descriptive language. This is the this is the FPGA design from analog devices for their radio cards. They all use Xilinx. So that's the 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 common foundation for all of these. The upper levels of Petalinux, MathWorks Buildroot, and Kuiper all give you slightly different uh, interfaces, uh, different feel, different different, and they're different. So they're not interchangeable, um, except that I can pull out an SD card. I can pull out the Petal Linux SD card and put in a MathWorks build route if we need to use HDL coder. I can pull that out and put in Kuiper if we simply just need to do some basic operations with the stations. So we've had some huge step forward here uh, with new hardware and, and realigning ourselves with essentially what the market has chosen, which is the 9002 and the 9009. And it is kind of a shame that the 9371 did not get a lot of traction in the marketplace. That was a bet on our part uh, three years ago. And I don't think it paid off, but it was a good bet. And the 9009 has all of the features and more of the 9371. So we'll be selling off the old gear and it's all good gear and people will probably be very happy with it. And we'll put in some, some bonuses and some swag along with it. Uh, but we'll be firmly launching ourselves forward to the 9000 series from analog devices. So that's what's going on in remote labs. This will affect remote lab South a little bit uh, if they have any sort of remaining equipment that's uh, radio equipment. I think the only thing that might affect uh, Remote Lab South is that they have a ZCU-106 rather than the ZCU-102. And the ZCU-106 has a smaller FPGA, but it does have uh, video hardware on board, a video codec, HDMI uh, stuff, which is desirable. However, the ZCU-106 is not well supported in the whole analog devices and MATLAB ecosystem. So it's a it has more features, smaller FPGA. We may want to go ahead and sell the ZCU-106 that is still, I think it's still in the box at uh, Remote Lab South and and either, and then go ahead and pick the ZCU-102 and that would give us the most flexibility um, and also would, would tie us together to have the same, it'd be able to support each other uh, there is a benefit to having a diverse set of equipment, but like I think this might be a good change. And that should be the only change because all of the other equipment at Remote Lab South is will be the same and will be useful moving forward. Okay, that's the main part of, of my report. Um, I'm gonna pause here for any questions or comments or anything that anybody needs to know from me. So go ahead. Okay, so plans for this next week are to continue with the MathWorks build route and to fully leverage our MATLAB environment. We're gonna heavily use this for Neptune, which is the ZCU-102 plus the 9002, which is the battery operated lower power, um, you know, SOC for, for, uh, the, for RF. Um, I'm thinking that maybe we might want to stay with uh, Petalinux and the Xilinx side, uh, a more pure open source approach for the ZC706 plus the 9009 for the the um, the satellite transponder. But uh, but this, I really need people to give me an opinion on this. Um, we already have a lot of 
of existing um, IP for this that we need to get up and running and end-to-end -end tested. Uh, and, and it looks like maybe the preference for that set of teams is is Petal Linux is something that's that's less tied into to MATLAB. Um, I think MATLAB could probably give us a big leverage here, but if but if we if if the team really kind of prefers to to just do it themselves, uh, to not use HDL coder, then we need to go with whatever the team prefers. So that's that's my thinking as of today. I'd like to hear any opinions or or guidance on that. Okay, so if you're listening to this and have an opinion, let me know. So we'll be we'll be looking at this really closely over the next week. Um, so yeah, good stuff. I think we've got uh, a a number of code bases that are working. Lots of really good equipment. Made lots of big steps forward in terms of infrastructure and support. Uh, we have the agility to pick between three different environments that work for us. We've gotten a lot of competence with using the filter wizards. They call, this is what analog devices kind of calls their, their profile and filter um, support tool chain. Um, so for these system on chips, for these radios, they're very complicated. They have a lot of different registers and a lot of configurations. And like Paul said, some of the documentation is not that complete or great or clear unless you know already all that you need to know um, and we've been slogging through this and and as communications engineering types uh, and as amateur uh, the true amateurs like we really love this stuff then a lot of this is really familiar like we see that there's an interpolation filter we know what that means we can see all the settings we can get pretty close but there's an awful lot of stuff that isn't really written down that you have to hunt through forums or track down the right person at a company to tell you. And that's just part of the job. So we're doing those jobs and we're we're trying to document it as we go so that other people can find it. So it's less hard for anybody that comes after us. And we're at the point where we're developing what's called profiles for all of these devices. Uh, this is how the analog devices system on chips work. You have a, a text file, it's human readable, it's a text file that you then present to your transceiver chip. And this has almost every setting. This has all the filters, the filter coefficients, all of the clock settings, everything that it needs in order to work well at the frequency, bandwidth, and, and et cetera that you've chosen for it. Um, and sometimes it works. And then sometimes we found it does not. Like we've had situations where we follow the instructions and the profile simply doesn't load onto the chip because these are computers too. And all of the problems that you have with computers, processors, you, you have with these, these complicated systems. So what we're, what we're trying to do is allow people to develop open source and amateur friendly code uh, and, and get things done um, in a in an env a complex environment that is really kind of aimed towards large commercial teams. So this is difficult, but we've been able to pull it off so far and we'll keep making progress. And I think we have a, a better foundation with the 9,009 and 9,002 than we did before. So over the next few weeks uh, and at IMS 2023 in June, where we have a demo and at DEF CON in um, in Las Vegas in, in August uh, at our showcase, I think we'll be able to to present and to share uh, video evidence that that we're we're doing good solid work and moving the entire field forward quite a bit. I don't know of any other amateur radio team working in this realm uh, at this level. Uh, we're looking actively looking for them and trying to to hook up with them and to help uh, any other, organization or any other team or any other uh, amateur radio endeavor to take advantage of these sorts of chips, code bases, published work. Um, there is really not a whole lot of open source FPGA designs out there. And we're trying to very hard to change that 
Uh, so if you're listening to this and you are interested in this sort of work, or if you know of a uh, organization or club or, or group or, or anybody um, that we can, can get in touch with that, that might either benefit from this work or be able to contribute to make it work better, uh, get in touch with us. And all of that will be uh, at the end of this in uh, and also in the, the comments and description. All right, that's all I've got. Anybody got anything else? Okay, we'll close and we'll move into office hours. Thank you everybody for coming here. Your time and expertise and energy is deeply appreciated because it is priceless. All right, see you next week. <laughs>